This episode of The Patch is brought to you by Shadow Warrior, a bold reimagining of the classic first-person shooter from Flying Wild Hog and Devolver Digital. Bring a katana to a gunfight as Lo Wang clashes with the Yakuza that betrayed him and the demonic forces hell-bent on destroying our world. Coming to Steam, GOG, and Humble Store September 26th. Hey everyone, hey. welcome to The Patch. We're here to talk about video games. It's Gus, it's Bernie, game. and Michael. G games. It's an eventful Guys. week. For, for late summer, a lot of stuff is going on. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. They got the Call of Duty multiplayer reveal today. What's, what's the deal with that? Next week, man. What, why are we at a point in the world where Call of Duty multiplayer needs, like, a reveal event? Well, because well, it's totally different this time, Gus. Is it? There's multiplayer. You, there's shooting. There's dogs. The only things I gathered There's that were packages, different was woman. the dog and the woman. You can finally play There's as a, a female woman. character in multiplayer. I'm playing woman. It's like, why did that take so long? It's a good question. Seven games? So yeah, long. You, you would think it's like, what do you have to do? Make another one or two models? But well, I think actually with the Call of Duty franchise, I wonder why does the single player have a reveal? Because the multiplayer is really, that's the game, right? I mean, I don't know anybody yeah. who's like, Dying to play the new single player experience in Call of Duty. Yeah, I guess. I mean, everyone loves for, multiplayer. It's yeah. almost like for, it's almost perfect. I guess for me, Call of Duty is single player. Essentially, I suck so bad at multiplayer. Yeah. I'll play through play the story and be ever. like, all right, I'm not. I'll, I'll jump on once and get my ass kicked and be like, oh, that was that was it. That's yeah. what I remember. You know, one of the upcoming features I want to do for the patch is as we come to the close of this generation of, you know, Xbox 360, PS3. I'd like to go around the office and get everyone from Rooster Teeth to submit what is the one thing you should do on this generation of consoles. Like the one achievement you should get would probably be the easiest question. Mm -hmm. You know, like what is the quintessential achievement for the Xbox 360 that you have to get before you move on to the Xbox One? That's, and one of my candidates would be one. from Modern Warfare, the Mile High Club. Yeah. Uh, a well known one. I remember getting that. I would say Seven Day Survivor is like the, like the iconic. One. Like, fuck you, Achievement. Who doesn't know about that, right? Like, even if you don't play Dead Rising, like, everybody knows about the Seven Day Survivor Achievement, right? I don't know, man. It's pretty old at this point. I mean, that was that Achievement came out in 2006. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah, a lot of people a... that probably didn't, weren't playing video games back Still, then. Still, I don't know. It's just so much. It's, it's referenced so much. Yeah. At least to me and, like, you know, in this office and everything, it's like, ooh, mm -hmm. the Seven Day Survivor. It's like, it's like a club, you know? It's kind of yeah. like the PAX Club. It's like... Can you get the achievement? Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, never mind. No. Let me tell you, You're man, uninvited from lunch. After 10 years of working this job, I am no longer amazed at the internet's ability to not know shit. <laughs> they true. Are, they very are, true. They are awesome at not knowing stuff. It's very true. I mean, here we are talking about a Call of Duty multiplayer reveal. I mean, everybody went ape shit last week because it was leaked. They were working on Left 4 Dead 3. Who the fuck doesn't think they're going to make a Left 4 <laughs> Dead 3? I yeah, mean, but they haven't announced it. I know. It's still the point, though. It's, it's why we talk yeah. about these things. It's because, you know, it's relevant, and it's current event, and the news comes up, and so we discuss it, you know. And yeah, I think with but, the But the we knew Call of Duty was coming. What's that? that but I'm still, what, I get, what I don't get still is why the event. We know the game is coming. We know the game has multiplayer. But they're showing you, uh, like, how the multiplayer works. I mean, why do they do reveal events for video games at all? You know? Yeah, yeah but I mean, like, the Call of Duty multiplayer is, well, I'm sure they've, like, tweaked this and that. It's the same fucking multiplayer for, like, the last six years. You run around and shoot people. I mean, it's... How much more are you possibly going to show to just do, mean, like, uh, an announcement? I don't know. I would, I, would, I would be more interested in, like, a reveal for single player. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what's the story? What's the campaign? What can you do? Were, I don't know. Were there any live dogs? In, in sports, <laughs> they announced that there's going to be a Super Bowl, even though everyone knows there's going to be a Super Bowl. Yeah, but they, and announced, they tell you who's going to be in it. You they know? announced where it's going to be. <laughs> that, too. Even that though does change. Even though you know it's probably going to be somewhere sunny, and it'll probably be in January or early February. You know, and it's still an exciting thing. It's a cultural event, mm. Call of Duty multiplayer. Why is the Super Bowl in February now? Um, they pushed it back, um, and this leads into another discussion, another announcement. I think because um, when the college football bowl system expanded with the BCS, that went further into January, which then pushed the playoffs of the NFL back a little bit, which then pushed the, uh, pushed the Super Bowl into February. And there's a huge announcement this week with NCAA football. Oh, yeah. That they can't include the SEC, the Big Ten, or the Pac-12. Pac-12. Pac Let's say Pac-10. The Pac-12 can't be included in the collegiate football game anymore. Yeah, so they're basically not going to have a game. I don't know. Those are the they, three biggest conferences. They also can't use player, or they never could use player names, right? But Dude. there was like a whole... Like I know there's some dude sued, that I said that yeah. the three biggest conferences. There's some dude from the Big East right now who's going, you motherfucker, what about the Big <laughs> East? I Listen, we're, we're living a Big 12 where, what was it now? Big 12? I think so. I think it's still called Big 12. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. We lived a big football. Yeah, so you should. Well, I know that. I mean, you know. So there was a there was we didn't talk about it, but there was an announcement made a couple of months ago where Amazon is selling a special 25th anniversary edition of Madden. Right. Really. For 100 bucks, and if you buy this 100 dollar edition of Madden, you get the game, of course, but you also get NFL Sunday ticket, which lets you watch every NFL game uh, on your computer. Wow. So and normally they sell that for that's like two hundred bucks a yeah, season I'd imagine by itself. It's pretty cheap. So it's like a hundred bucks. So basically you get Sunday ticket for forty bucks. Yeah. So I like that's I have no bad. idea why I hadn't heard about it. Who told me? Someone told me about it like two weeks ago. Might have been Jordan. Big no, sports fan. No, yeah, Jordan really? Yeah. No, I told I told Jordan. Who told me? Probably wasn't Chris. <laughs> no. Anyway, no, so I, I, I heard about you. it here through the office. Like, I didn't even see a press release for it. How I think about they, Ray? they announced it in May or June. Yeah, Polygon's got a story on it. Electronic Arts bucked the naming trend of its Madden NFL series for 2013, calling it Madden's NFL 25 to mark the franchise's 25th anniversary. Madden NFL 25 Anniversary Edition, which will be available for $99.99 at Amazon on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, includes a copy of the game as well as exclusive content for Madden Ultimate Team, the series' popular digital trading card mode, NFL... I don't see anything... I don't see anything about Okay, but the real draw of the anniversary edition for football fans comes in its special offers for DirecTV's NFL Sunday ticket service, which allows subscribers to watch every out-of-market NFL game on Sundays during the season. That's pretty cool. And then, uh, like, I, I, so I thought I was holding out hope that maybe the NFL Sunday ticket would have an app on the 360 or the Xbox One. I'd be able to watch it. But no, they announced today they're not going to have an app. So you need to have, what was it, DirecTV? No. Yeah. You don't need to have DirecTV. Non-subscribers you, can sign up with a promo code for $10 off each month of service for the first year. You, and you, oh, so you, it's you can, $10 off. But you can also watch it via your computer. As well as a free full season subscription to NFL Sunday Ticket Max. So you, okay. you can just watch it like in a web wow. browser. Uh, Max usually costs $299 by itself. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. So it's a, it's a good deal. I don't know why I hadn't heard about it. How are they making money off that? I assume they're trying to get new subscribers. Like, they yeah. just try to get new directors. To hook, yeah. I, I get that. Usually, that's a discount, but that's like a crazy good deal. Mm-hmm. It made yeah. me buy. I mean, it made me buy Madden. I hadn't bought a Madden game in probably four or five years. EA, EA and the NFL might be subsidizing it in some way. It seems to me I would cancel the service and then buy the game. And get it back, <laughs> yeah. You know, if you're saving two hundred bucks. Yeah, but you see this stuff occasionally. What confuses me even more with these like big franchises, like we're talking about Call of Duty, Madden. Uh, if Madden. I've heard stuff about their sales falling as well, which over time, if there's 25 years of this game, sales are going to start to drop off after a while. I heard in the Wii they sold, and the Wii is not a big uh, sports platform, they sold less than 70,000 copies on the Wii mm-hmm. of the uh, Madden, and they discontinued making uh, Madden for Nintendo. But uh, I'm more amazed when I see stuff like the fanaticism over Watch Dogs. That's not even a released game yet. And Ubisoft is talking about it, referring to it as a 10-year franchise. Really? How the fuck do people know that this is thing's going to be successful? Do they just determine this is a game that's going to be successful yeah, and we're just going to will it into they existence? they just count the boners. And they're like, <laughs> that's how you gauge the success. Because, like, one right here, I'm so, super excited about that game. What, what they probably do is, I mean, they're probably committed to it. So even if the first one doesn't do well critically, they'll probably know that they'll respond to the criti- criticisms and fix it in the next game. It's like Mass Effect. It's like Percy Jackson. Man, true. Except they waited seven years to make Percy the second Jackson. movie. Yeah, that's weird. And it's all the same actors. <laughs> yeah, I started seeing trailers for that. I was like, wasn't there already a Percy Jackson movie? Yeah, like, it was like five. It's, it's like whatever. It's like the Harry Potter books. There's like five or six books, but it's like, it's supposed to be like a year later. And it's like, I think that movie came out like five or six yeah, years they, ago. Yeah, they waited a long time. Yeah. I mean, their approach is, there's, somebody did an interview with The Guardian. Senior producer Dominic Gay, G-U-A-Y, Gway, maybe? And he says, honestly, that's what we're doing, too. Here's the way we think about it. Even if we change our minds mid-course or after shipping Watch Dogs and say, scratch that, we'll do something else, the planning helps to make a strong core. We've all seen TV series where after a season there are a lot of mysteries. Then at the start of season two, you think they didn't know what was going to happen. They're just stringing us along. So it's like they're like saying, we're going to make this a 10-year franchise, whether or not people like it's it. It's a bold strategy. <laughs> it's I like, you're going to like Watch that, Dogs. Um, unless you don't, then we're going to go under. <laughs> you know, and I mean, that's pretty much it. It's kind of an all-or-nothing move, which is cool if it works out. So, uh, not so much if it doesn't. So I'm really excited. I'm, I'm more excited for The Division than Watch Dogs. I, I know there's a lot of people who are really excited about Watch Dogs, but it seems to me like they're really setting the, uh, they're several setting games the that are like in this like urban, gritty environment. Mm-hmm. Where you have to like move around with technology, it's like it's, there's kind of some overlap there. How much? Yeah. How much like do you think they just have a team that's like work on gritty urban environments? <laughs> like, are we gonna take this for Watch Dogs? We're we gonna take this for the Division. 
Well, do you think are there ever franchises in your mind that you get confused with one another? Any video game franchises? Because Watch Dogs is in mind with something else. I constantly I'm, get I'm confused. I'm sure, but what's your? Because Watch Dogs was announced at about the same time that Sleeping Dogs was coming out. Oh, and right. And so I constantly, when someone says Watch Dogs, I immediately think of Sleeping Dogs, yeah. and I'm like, well, I mean, that makes sense with the name. Yeah, it does, and it's like, but I and always think of the cover of it. They're both like free roam, uh, you know, open world, you know, games. What was it? What was the nickname you guys came up for it? Uh. <laughs> The, the nickname that we came up for uh, Watch Dogs, because it's like, a, it's like a GTA, you know, not really clone. Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping, Sleeping Dogs. dogs. I yeah. just did it now. Yeah. Did it. Sorry. <laughs> now you're part you, of the club. You fucked me. But uh, because uh, Sleeping Dogs is basically a, G- a really good GTA clone, but it's like, I'm, I don't remember off the top of my head, it's like Hong Kong or something like that. We were calling it GT Asia. GT Asia, that's right. Makes sense. Yeah. The, uh, it came. It came in a. We got like a, an early copy or something, and it didn't have a box, so we put it in its own box and just put like Ray put like a white piece of paper in it and wrote GT Asia on the spine and like put it on the but shelf. Now you know which one it is. Yeah, I got so aggravated because when we, last time on the patch when when I was on, we were talking about the DLC for uh, Bioshock Infinite that had just come out, the right. Clash in the Clouds, and. Of course, nowhere in this company do we have a copy of the game. Michael had his personal copy in his bag from home and let me borrow it. And you'd had the alternative cover yeah. for it. Is that just one you flipped inside yeah. out? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. over there still. It was so really no, cool. I, I it was really cool it. art. Usually, like, uh, games are doing it more and more where, like, you know, the they take the box art and it's reversible. And uh-huh. You can pull it out and flip it around. But a lot of people do, like, a shitty job where, like, one... They don't put the game name on the, on the opposite spine, so it doesn't make sense in a bookshelf. You know what I mean? Like right. the spine's on the proper end, but not on the reverse end. You just have a red like stripe. Skyrim is like that. Skyrim has a reversible thing on the other side, uh-huh. but it's just like a blank thing. Uh, Bioshock was like one of the first games I ever saw that actually had Bioshock on both spines. So I was like, oh, it's fucking cool. Plus, it's like really cool art. And not to say that the original box art isn't cool, but it's the same art. I mean, they've been pushing since they announced the game like two years ago. So the second I got it, I'm like, oh, that's different, and I spun it around. And I still haven't finished the game, but it's like that giant fucking bird thing. Yeah, that's like songbird. Yeah, yeah. that's like all the art. So (laughs) it is what the original name for the character was: giant fucking bird. (laughs) Giant Giant fucking fucking bird thing. thing. (laughs) That's like the concept. Giant giant robot bird. Have you guys pre-ordered? I'm on Amazon right now because we were. I was looking at the Madden 25 edition. Yeah. Have you pre-ordered consoles yet? Yeah. I got both. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, both. I I realized I hadn't pre-ordered my PlayStation 4 yet. And so I went on Amazon. I was like, I wonder if I can. And it's like, oh, there it is. And hit here to pre-order. And it's like, great, you pre-ordered it. And I was like, that was too easy. That was three days ago. Yeah. There's no way that that's right. Did, it, did, did you have like a launch guarantee, like a window when you'll get it? No. It, did, well, it, says, <laughs> it says you purchase this item then August you, 10th. You purchased it. It will be enjoy it next August. Yeah. I guess they'll just, I mean, in my opinion, if Amazon says we have, you know, 500,000 pre-orders, they're going to get their 500,000 units. If those 500,000 units exist. Well, they'll make 500,000 units, but, I mean, it's like, it's who goes to what retailer? Amazon's got to pr- fall pretty high up in that chain. Yeah. Like, Walmart would be high. I think Amazon's right there with them. And yeah. then maybe Best Buy. These yeah. are all American franchises. I'm sure there's stuff in Australia and I'm Canada. Sure like Electric City. Or yeah, or <laughs> Moose... Electronics. <laughs> Moose, Moose Tronics. <laughs> in England, I mean. Yeah, I think I got both reserved for launch day, you yeah. know, assuming that's accurate and, you know, it you seems, can't really do anything about it, you know what I mean? The thing, like, I'm, I'm really skeptical because it seems Absolutely. like this has been so smooth. They're like, oh, yeah, we got plenty of units. Yep. Like, you can, you, you, like, they didn't, the day they went on sale, they didn't instantly sell out and they go on, like, a three-month right. waiting it list. Right, it was a while so, until they pulled, like, first day guarantee. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm still skeptical. I'm, I'm sure as launch comes closer, you'll be like, yeah, we couldn't make as many as we thought. Uh, you're fucked. Reliving the horrors of the yeah. 360. Yeah. Where everyone got like 12% of the supply they were supposed to get. The hardest one I remember to get was the Wii. That thing was in shortage for probably, and that was just because of pure demand. Yep. That was in shortage for, I think, a year and a half. Mm. The PS3 I was pretty rough the for Wii the first year also, I think. Is also, I feel like, before you get into like the console and what it's capable of and the games and this and that, I mean, I, I think like when it came out, the Wii is like the juggernaut of parents buying shit for their kids for Christmas. I'm just yeah. like, it's Nintendo, they know what Nintendo is, it's the cheapest, and it's got Mario in it, yep. you know? And they're like, oh, fuck, I'll buy that. Like, that must have killed the first few years it came out, like, for holidays. Yeah, it did. Yeah. I think it still sold more than the 360 and the PS3, I think. It didn't launch with a Mario game, though, did it? It did... I don't know. I don't know if Sunshine was launch. It launched with Not Sunshine. Sports. Sunshine. Uh, sorry. Sunshine was GameCube, uh, Super Mario Galaxy. Galaxy. Yeah, Galaxy. Galaxy yeah. was not launch. 
It was uh, it was a little bit after then, I guess. No, it definitely was not. Wii Sports was the big title. Everyone yeah. everyone played fucking bowling. Was bowling. fucking yeah. No, Sunshine wasn't launch either. The only launch I know of, besides like fucking Nintendo, all I know, uh, like the original, was uh, Super Mario sixty four. That was definitely a launch title. And that's why I Super bought Mario it. Brothers. Super Mar- yeah, and Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. Yep. Yeah, because it came bundled yeah. with the Super Nintendo. Fucking great game. Fantastic. And it was bundled. Game. Yeah. God, I played the shit. That's like the out of original that game. bundle, you know. Super Nintendo, Super Mario World, you're good to go. Well, Nintendo, the NES, you could buy in a bundle with uh, Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. Remember, they were both on that same fucking yeah, cartridge. Yeah, I had that. Yeah, the split cartridge. Yeah, when you include stuff though in bundles, it always becomes like, you know, it it, it really jacks up the numbers. Like Wii Sports is probably the best selling video game now of all time. It has sold 83 million copies. Yeah, <laughs> shocking. Yeah, because it was shipped with it. What do you think is the highest selling Xbox 360 game? This is according to Wikipedia. Xbox uh, 360? Fucking like Hexic or something? <laughs> I don't know if Hexic would count, no. but it should. It it's definitely on the arcade. Talk about like retail? Yeah, no, or just like a yeah, disc version. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Minecraft? It's, it's what, you're on the right track, no, I, though, I don't with think Hexic. Minecraft has done 8 million, I think they announced. No, you're going to poke your eyes out when you hear this. It's okay. Connect Adventures. <laughs> It's uh, 24 million copies of wow. Connect Adventures. Did it, I guess that shipped with Connect units? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah which it, was, it was bundled with, with it. A lot so. of Xbox. Yeah, nobody's yep. buying that off the shelf by itself. And then Call of Duty Black Ops was a follow up with 12 million copies. Wow. Yeah, so Halo 3 sold 8.1 million copies. So even on the 360, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops vastly outsold Halo 3. Black Ops uh-huh. came out like two years after Halo 3. Two years after Halo 3. So there'll be more units on the right, market. You're right. November 18th, 2010 was Black Ops, and Halo 3 was in 2007. But there were other titles Three like years. Reach yeah. and ODST and, and Halo 4 yeah. um, that came out after that. This, this, I don't know if this includes Halo 4 yet. And also, Halo 4 hasn't had enough time to, to continue to sell. But then Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare 2, that released in 2009, that sold about 7.6 million copies. So almost, almost up with Halo 3. Man, that's a, that's a crazy growth from Modern Warfare 2 to Black Ops. Mo- uh, yeah. Minecraft, by the way, 7 almost million copies. Double. 7 million? Then that list might be a little outdated. I could have they, they, they just press release 8 million, million. Like, yeah. two, like a week or two ago. Wow. We can, I can update Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. God damn Wikipedia. God I, damn you. I, 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 there's so much wrong information. I don't know what's more wrong, uh, Reddit or Wikipedia. <laughs> They're both. It's the same people. When, it's when, the same when, motherfuckers. When they Reddit, go from one to the other. When Reddit starts quoting Wikipedia, it's just awful. They were, they were, I was reading quotes of like how I got you? my nickname, Bernie, <laughs> that I was called, I, I'll, I'll read it, I'll read it off my Wikipedia page. Fucking, I shouldn't even mention it. You shouldn't I have even one. mention it. No, you should. Reddit, when you go to Reddit, if you're making a post, it should disable quotations from your, like, <laughs> keyboard. It's fucking worthless. Like, I go in there every day, and, and like Bernie said, like, you can't fight the internet. You can yeah. correct someone a hundred million times, and just like, not even like crazy stuff, it's just like, oh no, just like, just so you know, that's wrong. And then it's like, in that same thread, you see like fifty people post after you saying wrong shit. It's like yeah. it's it's uh, just you, like scroll up, guys. It's it's right there. It's a shame you can't make like a fact checker bot that oh automatically parses everything and looks for bad information. Or just like you know, make it like click a button where like when someone opens this thread, uh, there's a recording screams at them first before they can read anything. <laughs> just blank comment box. Actually, it's it's fixed on my Wikipedia page, but basically it was. I'm not going to say what the wrong information was because then it'll make its way back in there again. <laughs> but it was basically how I got my, my name, Bernie. Just to clarify, my, my nickname, Bernie, comes from my last name, Burns. I thought that would be obvious from the way that I spell it. No. And it literally. And you're a Michael. I'm a Michael. When I went to high school, there was every other iteration of Michael existed in my group of friends. There Mikhail? Was a, a Michael. No, there was no Miguel. There was a Michael. Mikhail. Mikhail. Mikhael. Fucking like, Russians. Yeah. There was Michael, Mike. There was even a Mick <laughs> that we had. So they named me Bernie. And I, I remember when I was 13 That's years old. That's when I was named. And yeah, literally. I know the person years, who named me. I was me. like, what's your name, boy? Uh, yeah. Well, just, just say, hey, you. <laughs> but I actually, I actually know the person who named me. And she goes, she looked at me and she goes, she goes, what's your, she goes, what's your last name? I said, Burns. She goes, let's call you Bernie. And everybody goes, oh, yeah, that'll fit. And I said, that'll never stick. <laughs> and then it's been that way since I was 13 years old. But it was never derived from anything else. It was always derived from my last name. I'm just going to say that. I'm not going to say what people said it was. Okay. <laughs> <to run from. laughs> 
Yeah, and then the other thing I ran into on Reddit was that I just I went to a Red versus Blue thread. I think it was the last time I was on there. And they were discussing about who discussed who directed season six reconstruction of Red versus Blue, mm-hmm. and um, they said, "Oh, that was the one Gavin did." And somebody said, "No, that was season seven. And this guy kept saying, "Nope, it's he directed season six and season seven. And then somebody else said, "Bernie directed season six. Gavin directed season seven. Same guy showed up and goes, "No, Gavin directed both season six and season six, season six and seven. The guy went through like fifteen threads on the same topic. Just constantly saying the same thing over and over again. And somebody finally goes, hey, whatever his name was, motherfucker, quit fucking saying that. Links to IMDb. And he just replied after going, oh, I thought Gavin directed them both. And it's like, stop helping. Stop. Yeah. You don't. It, it, participation is not mandatory. Was that Gavin? It probably, that, probably was. It it's probably like, was. No, was nothing, dude, I'm pretty sure it was like season eight, too. There's nothing wrong with an opinionated person who's got bad information. Yeah. And they just won't stop. It's right. just, that drives me up the fucking wall when I see someone spreading false information in a manner that requires way more work than checking the information. It's like, you have the fucking internet. You going to 15 threads telling people they're yep. wrong takes way more time and effort than just going like, Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And looking it up. Maybe, I fucking hate that. Maybe that's why we need to have Call of Duty multiplayer reveal. Yeah, so I, I like, guess so. <laughs> <laughs> here's yeah, all the information. It's like fucking tweets Probably. you get. You get a tweet, right? I don't care where it comes from. Your phone, your computer, fucking your asshole. It, maybe it's an app now. I don't know. But okay. I don't care where. It, people tweet questions like, an apple. hey, you know, there's like specific questions like inside the office stuff. But then they're like, hey, what was that uh, one movie when so-and-so did this or whatever? It's like, fucking Google it. Like you're on the internet. You asked me. You will get a quicker response by asking the internet. Yeah, it Why took longer, would you ask a person? It took longer for you to type the question than just to type the search into Google. I hate that. I hate that. Uh, so we got this thing. What do we got? Hell yeah. Saints Row 4. Yeah, you guys did. You guys, <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> that came in the office and the two of you guys just chomp hoarded that. You know why? Yeah, why? Because well, it was addressed to us. Why? why? Sort of. Why? Why do you? Why, why do you get it? Because C- I'm cool and people like me. Sense. Gus is a cool guy extraordinaire. It was addressed to him. Flip side, the other one was addressed to Jack. I was like, Jack, uh, well, he got it, and uh, he was like, oh, I got a game, and he was doing something, whatever. He's like, hey, you want to open this? I'm like, yeah, sure, I opened it. And I was just like, oh, because it's like, we rarely get, like, early games. You I'm know? so disappointed. People, people, that was your impression of Jack? Your impression no. of Jack is way better than that. No, Jack, Jack was just like, all right, sorry, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, oh, hey, you want to check out this game? <laughs> Why don't you rip that baby open and tear into that bad boy? <laughs> Fucking bust that cherry wide open. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> That's way better. All right. So I did that, expecting it. You expecting busted that it, cherry wide open. Oh, dude, I f- obliterated it. That hymen was nowhere to be found in Saints Row 4. Anyway, you got the game. So I got the game. <laughs> and then what happened? You asked me to elaborate. <laughs> so I got the game, and uh, I, I do like how Ray was out of the office because he'd be the only like big contender of like who's gonna play it. He was in New York for a week, and. Uh, uh, we were like, oh, fuck, it's Saints Row 4. And J- even Jack, like, just because, like, me and Jeff played that, that's where we started, like, the first right. Let's Play videos and stuff. No, hilarious, by the way. If you've never seen the Let's Plays with Michael and Jeff and Let's You say hilarious. To me, I'm just like, ugh, because it's like, those are our oldest videos. You know what I mean? It's like those yeah. classic, like, they're classics, but I get it's it. like so shit. And like, it's also two us. of you and not, like, the full cast. Right. It's, yeah. it's totally different. But uh, Jack looks at me, he's like, oh, cool, cool. Uh, so, I mean, you know, you can take that. And I was like, oh, can I? Because I was gonna anyway, but thank you. <laughs> and then, like, I ran around the office just fucking holding over my head. And, so, then, I, and then I came Twitter. downstairs, like, two minutes later, I was like, oh my god, look what I got. <laughs> yeah. and you're like, I got it, too. I was like, I too. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, dude, I'm fucking, I'm tweeting a picture of this, and Gus is like, I just fucking tweeted one. <laughs> I was like 20 seconds behind him. Yeah. So how was it? Can you talk about how it was now? Yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, we can we can finally talk about have it. Have you played it, all the it other comes Saints Row? I Tuesday. know you have. I have, yeah. Uh, I've played only three and four. Only three and four. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the game actually comes out next Tuesday, so everyone can check it out if they want. I, I, I thought it was fun. Um, it was a good game. I mean, it's not like, oh my god, the greatest game ever made, mm-hmm. but it's just it's a fun, goofy a Saints Row game. Yeah. Super easy. Not challenging. Yeah, I really. want to almost go back and play it on hard because yeah. playing it on normal was like no challenge at all. Yeah, I played, uh, I mean, pretty much all the Saints Rows are easy. That's how I was to look at it. Like, especially the fact the biggest the biggest factor with Saints Row, and I think that it was the case from the first one for Saints Row 1, 2, and 3, and the biggest difference between GTA is you just recover health. You know, all you got to do is hide behind a corner for like two seconds and your fucking health comes back. GTA yeah. 4 is hard as shit because it's like you get shot like, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. And like if you're in the middle of a mission, you're running around yeah. looking for the little health things. Saints Row, your health always comes back. And it's like they give you like crazy upgrades where and, like and explosions don't hurt you and fall damage yeah. doesn't hurt you. And you shoot enemies and they drop health. And so not fly. only does your health come back, but it's like you can go pick well, up health Saints, constantly. In Saints Row 4, I noticed that because we talked about that. 
it looks like in the because the whole thing in Saints Row Four is like you're in the real world and you're in a virtual world, yeah. and the virtual world is why you have all the superpowers and stuff like it's that. Kind of like the Matrix. It's basically a parody. The whole game's a parody on the Matrix. It's really funny too. I thought the yeah. like the content of the game was was really funny, but it looks like I've realized whenever you're doing real life missions or missions where you don't have your superpowers, you regain health, like automatically. Yeah. Anytime outside of that, you don't. So if you're just running around in the simulation, you have to pick health up. You don't no, you don't get it back. Eventually it does come back. I didn't get it on it's mine. It's slow. Were you playing on easy or normal? Normal. I could have sworn it never came yeah, back. It, it does. It's slow as shit, but it does come back. Did you play all the DLC on Saints Row the third? Yes. Okay. So uh, and, and I know you did. I know I didn't play one. Oh, really? I think there was the the the, the I think I did the game the one. Movie, there was the movie one and there was the trouble with clones. And I then, didn't do the clone one. The, okay, so the clone one was the last one, uh, and that's the one where you get this, um, uh, they had a drug, it was like a, a, a radiated drug that you used, mm -hmm. and it turned you into a superhero, and it looks like that the entire Saint Row 4 is basically like that DLC, where you're like running at, at super speed and yeah. all that. Is it, is it like that? Yeah. It's like yeah, a superhero but game. It's like you, yeah, you just, it's like Crackdown. It's like it's, it's good what you crackdown. it's what you hope Crackdown Two would have been. It's Crackdown One in the fun sense of you can jump, you can run, way more abilities than Crackdown. You get like you know elemental po yeah. powers, like you can shoot fireballs and ice balls and shit like that. It's called Saints Flow. That's the drug that's called. Right. Well, it's not a drug. It's a soda. energy drink. It's an energy drink. It's an energy drink now. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. it was an experimental thing in Saints Row Three DLC. So yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's an energy drink, and you can see there's a giant can hovering over the capital there, okay. in the reflection of the sunglasses. Saints Flow, uh, yeah, but it's. I mean, I, I played all the side missions and all the story missions, and I think doing all of that took me like 22 hours, and that was everything. I mean, I didn't get all the collectibles. I got all the data clusters. Did you get clusters. gold on all the challenges? Uh, no, or activities? I, I got gold on a lot of them, and then silver on the yeah, rest. Yeah, I mean, like playing the game, just like story, easy as shit, really fun, but super easy, just like over the top superpowers, just like. Eventually uh, you get to the point where your, your ammo weapons. is infinite. Yeah. You don't have to worry about picking up ammo. Almost That's the way most of the games work. Yeah. yeah. Almost yeah. immediately though, like you like you can build that shit up. And it's just it's just ridiculous. It's more like like I found myself using different abilities and stuff just so I didn't use the dubstep gun the entire game. Because it's like the best gun ever created. Uh -huh. yeah. Like the th it just eviscerates everything. And it, it plays and dubstep music. And if you customize it, like if you put different like, color schemes on yeah. it, it plays different music. I like the right. pop one the best. Yeah. That was my favorite. And but so that just if, that's just something that, that is built into the game that's not like a pre-order bonus or anything like that? No, the only pre-order bonus, like we got the Commander-in-Chief edition. This came with the America gun, which yeah. is the America. gun flamethrower Hoshifi rocket America. launcher. Sorry. America. Yeah. It's the gun flamethrower rocket launcher. Uh huh. Uh, that looks like a bald eagle. It screaming. also it also and it comes came with, with the, the Uncle uh, Sam outfit. The Uncle Sam outfit and the screaming eagle. Right. I thought the screaming eagle was part of the America. Uh, what do you mean? Is that a different weapon? No, it's not a weapon. It's a fucking ship. Did you not see that? What? The screaming eagle is a giant fucking bald eagle that you fly around as a jet. And when you fire rockets, it goes. Ah! And like makes like an eagle noise when you well, fire rockets. It's basically the VTOL from Saints yeah. Row 3. It's just literally a giant eagle. And when you're in like, uh, there's there's like jet mode and then there's like hover mode. Uh -huh. When you're in love, hover mode, love the, the, the fucking wings flap mm -hmm. like an eagle. It's fucking I never got in it's vehicles, fucking so ridiculous. I guess I, I never called for it. So I'll have to check that out. I just checked it out because I was, it's, it's, it's really funny looking. So, recommend buy? Saints Row yeah, 4? I had a lot of fun. If you like I mean, Saints Row 3, yeah. It's it's hard to compare to Saints Row 3 because, like, the biggest thing about Saints Row 3 is it's it's an open world game, like GTA. You drive. You know what I mean? Saints Row 3, you drive, like, half the game. Right. And in Saints Row 4, you never drive ever. You drive, like, 5%, and then you get your superpowers, and you run faster than cars, and you can jump over buildings and stuff. But it's really weird because it's the exact same, like, world as Saints Row 3 because, if I'm not mistaken, the whole thing, and as you were saying, where it seemed like DLC with Saints Row 4 was that it was planned DLC for Saints Row 3, and then THQ went under, and then someone else bought them and picked it up, and they basically took the DLC and turned it into Saints Row 4. It doesn't feel like just DLC, it doesn't. It's, it's, weird, it's weird in the middle, because it doesn't feel just like DLC, but I can certainly see the time with Saints yeah. Row 3, you know what I mean? Where it's like, it's, it's kind of like um, Ocarina of Time 
for uh, Nintendo 64 and Majora's Mask, where like right. they used all the same assets, everything looks the same, the graphics are the same, it's the same engine. It's a new like, adventure. There's all the cars and everything, it's like you would never use them, but they basically just didn't take anything out mm -hmm. of Saints Row 3. Even shit that's kind of redundant and you would never use in this game, yeah, like, they just left it in. Like the island that you get to at the end of Saints Row 3, mm -hmm. like where all the zombies are, mm -hmm. is still there in Saints Row 4, but there's never any missions right. on it. Right, you just it's don't still do a shit with it's it. It's a restricted zone. So it's like, but are there's there like, zombies when you fly over it? No. Stuff? There's no zombies. Okay. It took me, I perfected the game. Um, Spoiler for Saints Row 3, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, spoiling yeah. a two-year-old game. It took me about 35 hours to 100% the entire game. So as guys have played this and have played previous iterations of the franchise, do you feel that Saints Row has evolved beyond, you know, come out of the shadow of GTA? Well, I think it just GTA established clone. its own identity. You know, yeah. they, like yeah. early on it was a clone. I would say I, number one is absolutely a clone. Saints Row the original yeah. is a shitty clone. It's, it's an okay game. Right. It's not as good as GTA, but it was also the first like GTA, big GTA clone on 360 before GTA came out. Yeah. That's why I bought it, because GTA 4 wasn't out yet. So I was like, I'll play this. And it was okay, but GTA 4 it was better in every single way and blew it out of the water. And I feel like Saints Row 2, they really stepped it up and like kind of made it their own. And then 3 was just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Let me ask you this. Without spoiling anything in the game, you have gotten 100% of the achievements in it, so is Ray. Yeah. Right? Is there anything you wish you'd have known at the beginning of the game, starting out achievement-wise? Like in, in Saints Row 3, when you kill off some of the gangs... <laughs> yeah, there's, you, there's you, one. It's a Gus question. <laughs> well, really? Would you miss one? There's a, a point in the story where you're presented an A or B option. Right. If you take one of them, you don't get the achievement. Okay. And it's like, it's in the middle of the story, so you have to, if you want to go back, you have to have a save back before it. Well, that's great to know, because it's, I mean, most people don't want to spoil it, but I also would r rather run the risk of reading about that achievement and getting a spoiler. It's, 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 it's not, like it's a not really spoiler. a spoiler at all. It's a really kind of a fuck you achievement, because I'm fairly certain it's the only missable achievement in the entire game. Yeah. There's only three secret achievements in the entire game, and two of them are story related. Uh -huh. And there's only one that's like, you can miss it. And essentially, like Gus said, it's like basically go through blue door or red door, and that's it. And you have to go through blue door to beat the game. You go through red door, basically. It says like, go through you, red door and die. Right. That's that's what it is. Okay. You die, restart at a checkpoint, and then you have to pick the blue door. But you get an achievement for God. it. And he never tried the red door. He just went with the I blue. I saw the blue. It's like why would I do that? Yeah. Right. Oh God. So you. Uh, so you yeah. choose the red door. I would totally like, do the same thing. Yeah. And then, choose and the then, red door. It's like nah, you choose wrong achievement. But here you go. Now pick the blue door. You just hundred percent had stated decay. And I, I, I never played it. I ran into a problem. How did you, what'd you think? I How'd thought you? it was fantastic. I thought it was. I was really disappointed game. about. The ending is really eight, abrupt. Eight, seven. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, I, it didn't even take me that long to play. It was only three days, and it wasn't that much. It maybe took me like less than ten hours. You know, maybe like seven, eight hours to beat whatever. At like four hours, I realized how close I was to beating it, and I was sad. Mm -hmm. I was like, I wish this was a retail game. I really yeah. wish that there was co-op in that game. It and was they, they really all those things were planned. Fun. Retail yeah. version. Yeah, yeah they, they said, and they publicly said that it would be too difficult, so they're not going to add multiplayer into it. But that would be such a fucking fun game to, to it play co-op really co with. It really would be. But there was an achievement there where it's like, I made what I thought was a wise choice, and I listened to some of the NPCs on how to make that choice, mm -hmm. and then trying, oh no, you should have done that because you completely missed an achievement, you gotta play the game again to get it now. That really sucked. And trying to was trigger. That, was that like helping people? Was it, was, it was specifically with the Wilkerson's. I'm not gonna spoil anything with the game. It's, right. There's a family in there called the Wilkerson's, and there's some, there's like a quest tree, and I just made a choice at the end that was different. It was even like have. funny stuff, or like, it, it fucking annoys me when the game like feeds you misinformation because yeah. I was the last one to play it. Like, like Jeff played it first, he got it first when it came out. Oh no, I think, uh, I think Ray played it first. Fucking, you know, he rinsed through it, beat it, or whatever. Then Jeff got it. And it's like everybody in the office was playing it, so I was just hearing like, oh, this happened and that happened. And then Gavin got it and he was playing it. So by the time I got it, it's like, all right, rule number right one, I need to know. don't listen to anyone, always drive cars. Yeah. You know, like NPCs tell you in the game, and there's part of a mission where like you get yelled at if you get in a car. It's yeah. like, no, that alerts them, that alerts the Zeds. It's like, yeah, and then you fucking run them over. Yeah, they You are absolutely matter. invincible in a vehicle. Yeah. Just until, run until, people over. Until you run over too many zombies and your car catches or fire. Until you're and Gavin. So you get in the next car. So. <laughs> I was playing the game for about four hours, right? I'm sitting at home playing, and Lindsay's watching me play. And I'm driving that fucking awesome orange car you get. It's like the one like super sports car in the mm -hmm. game. It kind of looks like the Bumblebee, Bumblebee car from Transformers. It's like some kind of Camaro. And I'm tearing ass in that, and I'm driving. And I have probably set on, or set maybe like seven or eight cars on fire at this point. One's never exploded on me, ever. And 
it's like I drive down the road and they're still there. Like 20 minutes later or an hour later, I'm like, that car's still on fire. Like yeah. I left it forever ago. It's still on it's fire. It's pretty persistent. Right. Yeah. So I'm driving and my fucking car gets on fire. And I'm just like, at this point, I still have Marcus. I had never lost him the entire game, which I was happy about that. I never had the dashboard. So I'm driving, my car's on fire, and I'm like, here we go again. You know, it's just like formality. And I'm just like, my, I'm talking to Lindsay. I was like, my fucking car light's on fire. And like, you know, I get out, but like, I don't even know if they blow up. And it blew Like, I get out of the car. I walk like six feet away. Fucking explodes and like sends me flying through the air. And I was like, oh my God. But and you like, didn't die. I didn't die, but like, my heart was pounding. Like, I like got up and I was like walking around the room. I was like, <laughs> I almost lost him. Yeah. I, almost, I almost lost him. Oh my God. I almost lost Marcus. It's like, it's like you had almost you had, had a close encounter was, in real life. It was a movie moment. I was like, I don't even know if the damn car. And I was like fucking jettisoned. That's well, funny. while we're talking, it looks like you have yeah, a read I'm gonna, coming I'm up. I'm read the, oh, can I get something started yeah, here? Go ahead. So while we're talking about 100% games, uh, can you pull up on the Xbox 360 here? Uh, it has, in the 360, you can go and look up. This is my profile. And you can see all your completed games. And I have 68 completed games. And you can sort by them here, so I got State of Decay. I just loaded that up because I was getting some of the Avatar stuff. And so, so what, are you showing off to us? No, no, no. I want to try something here. So Let me get get, rain this here. is one of my favorite ones. This is I have a completed game that is pre-ordering the Xbox to the dashboard. Nice. Your motherfucker. Uh, yeah, how do you do like that? that? Yeah. Uh, and then Saints Row. Oh, yeah, get rain here. I'll show my goddamn orange box. I bet he doesn't have that little That's prick. a good one. Uh, and then where is it? I want to test something here. So some of Joey's bugs. Here we go. I have Walking Dead. Now, I played Walking Dead when it came out, and it was, quote-unquote, the retail release, and I finished the whole first season or whatever it's called. Right. right. They released DLC for it called 400 Days, mm -hmm. and we've always been curious when it breaks a, a completed game. When does DLC do that? Because there's nothing worse to get a game completed. They release DLC yep. and suddenly take away one of your completed games. So I'm going to find out now where in the process, when does that break happen? And there's a lot of speculation of it either happens when you update the game or when you download the DLC. Clearly, it doesn't happen when they release the DLC because I still show this as right. a completed game. So I'm going to download. You go back to Gus's what, read. What? I'm going to download and figure out where this happens. Are you going to download it or are you going to go launch the game first? And oh, let's launch the game, the game I guess, yeah, first. Because the then, go. okay. So uh, here, I'm doing that. I want to remind everyone Wait. that this episode of the patch is brought to you by Shadow Warrior. Shadow Warrior is a bold reimagining of the classic first-person shooter from Flying Wild Hog and Devolver Digital. Bring a katana to a gunfight as Lo Wang clashes with the Yakuza that betrayed him and the demonic forces hellbent on destroying our world. Coming to Steam, GOG, and Humble Store on September 26th. Is it good old games or GOG? How do people say that? No fucking I always say GOG. GOG? Uh, it's a, I don't know if you remember Shadow Warrior. It was a game mm -hmm. for uh, 3D Realms made, I think right after Duke Nukem in, uh, in the late 90s. It's like a first person shooter with a sword. I never, I never played sword. it, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, but he also had guns. But it comes out September. Was that a PC game with yeah. like 8 million discs? D I don't remember. Or floppies? I thought, you know, it was a, I remember it coming on a CD. Hmm. I'm going to look this up. I'm, I'm sure I probably played it at some point. It, like, like it at first I was like, to me. I don't remember this game. And then I looked at the box art. Like I looked it up on Google. I was like, oh, right. I oh, yeah. I think I, yeah. Made, I, think yeah. I totally remember this. played that. Yeah. Yeah, as Who? soon as I saw the box, I was like, oh, right. Yeah, I remember this it's, game. It's an, Asian, it's an Asian hero. And then the tagline for the game is, who wants some Wang? That's a penis thing, by the way. Well, his name's Lo Wang. <laughs> and who wants some Wang? So yeah, it was very, it was very like along that style of like Duke Nukem uh, style humor. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, the, and we've been talking about Saints Row. I mean, Saints Row evolved from being a GTA clone. Then the second iteration of the game, there was a whole part of the game where you would spray people with shit from a septic tank yeah, truck. Yeah, that was fun. That's when you tell the Saints Row <laughs> doesn't give a franchise fuck. was fi finding its place in the yeah. world when they started doing stuff like that. All right, so I'm going to so wa launch, launch Walking Dead here. Um, uh, we're in the arcade dashboard, and I'm going to get the update, and then I'm going to see if, when I get the update... Did uh, you play the Walking Dead game? I have not. Okay. I have it, I have bar I have it uh, oh, from Ray. Oh, Cloud Storage. Uh, this might take a little I bit. I have the disc on me. I've never once played it. Why don't people use Cloud Storage? Look how convenient this is. Here I am playing Walking Dead for the first time on this studio Xbox, and it's syncing all my save games. Because yeah. I'm scared. But if you I had your like USB technology. key, you could just load it instantly. You wouldn't have to wait. That's true. What do you mean? Well, I'm not going to carry a USB key everywhere See, I go. Well, I carry it Really? You don't I carry, go. like, a laptop in a bag with you? Yeah, but look, dude, I'm not going to carry my save games around with me mm -hmm. and, and, like, and potentially lose them. I, I, but I, if you have the cloud, it's a good backup. Yeah, no, it's a good backup. I lost, I had, when we, I moved from USB stick to cloud, that's when I lost my Mass Effect 2 save. Mm -hmm. Losing my Mass Effect 2 save is a big deal, because I carried that over from Mass Effect 1. Anyway, I won't talk about that it. That sucks. I don't want right. to talk about it. So talk here we go. It. So now we're, we're here in uh, Walking Dead. All right, Bernie's loaded up the game. Everyone's so excited. Why does it disconnect you from Xbox Live to do an update? I've always well, Because if you deny the update, you can't be online. 
You can't be online. <laughs> Correct. Well, no. I, am, I, I am a subset of you. <laughs> that, make, that makes sense for, uh, that makes sense. Here we go. Cloud storage. Walking Dead. Uh, yeah, because I think it disconnects you instantly to apply the update and make sure that you don't continue playing uh, without uh, well, the most updated game. Now, this might be an interesting game because it's not telling me it has an update for the game. All right, but still, so, you're still in oh, the you game. See, you see there's downloadable content. I have a feeling it's going to add it regardless of update just because you loaded the game. So 400 days here if you on the Xbox. This is a... Uh, I can buy the, the latest one. Okay. All right? So now, now I, look, there's a get thing there. I guess I haven't downloaded on this box episode five. I have I have 100 percent of this game obviously because we showed that in the dashboard. Should right. I drop out now and check it now that right. I loaded the game? You can right. probably check it right from here. But well, I, I think you have to drop out to see it. The only place really? you, yeah. That's what kind of sucks about the Xbox is the only place you can check your completed games is in the dashboard, and I can't see yours. I can only see mine. Like we couldn't even check Ray's. Well, you could check though achievements still, you haven't gotten, right? Just check your achievement list. Yes, only for that game. But I can't see that specific list that says I have sixty-eight completed games. True. True. Like well, Ray, it still says sixty-eight. Oh, right it even bumped up Walking Dead because I just loaded it. Is now at the front of my list, and so yeah. it still counts as a completed game. So I'm gonna download the DLC and see what happens. So I mean, that's cool then if it doesn't update until you download I the know, DLC. I know. See, the thing about that is though, I'm confused how that works because I know that's not a science. Like I know I have been unperfected on shit that I have not downloaded. Case in point, Saints Row. Skyrim I've, for me. I've only missed the last DLC. I think I'm missing 100 gamer score, whatever that is, like five or six achievements. I've never downloaded it. I don't own it. But you I did never play, bought it. You did play some DLC. I and played DLC, some DLC. DLC that came after that stuff. No, I've never played the, last, the last DLC. DLC. I've played the everything before DLC. it. Okay. I've never, I've never yeah. downloaded it. I haven't bought it. I may have booted the game up since then, but I know I haven't bought it yet. And uh, Bought it. Bought it. Bought and botanized. Purchased. Yeah. And, it uh, hasn't been bought. But I've been unperfected from that son of a bitch. Same thing with Dishonored. I was absolutely unperfected from Dishonored before I got the DLC. Skyrim, I have 100% of all the retail achievements in Skyrim, but I have never played any of the DLC. I've never downloaded any of the DLC, but I did play the original game after all that DLC was available. So I did have all the updates you that said DLC existed. raise a good point earlier, saying that it could be separate between retails and Xbox Live Arcade games. It's possible. Like... But I don't know. It's just but, weird. But Walking Dead it was both an Xbox Live and it also has a retail release. Yeah, but it was an arcade game. Yeah, but it's like it's a, a it's like a game. disc arcade game, yeah. though. That's not really a. Do you retail think they game. see a lot of sales on that? Like, is there a big market for people know. who buy the physical version? Like, they won't That's buy the downloaded one. Who the fuck doesn't buy shit online anymore? I guess maybe like, who someone doesn't? who doesn't have broadband. Right. Who? That's what I'm saying. How many people? What could the percentage be? Well, apparently it's a large enough percentage to make people switch uh, how the Xbox One works. Bitch and moan about it. So that's the thing. That's the thing. I think people complained about it, even the people that it didn't affect at all and it was completely irrelevant to. Guys, it's I was got to be what a tiny we talking percentage. About, I got off. Talking about people, people with no fucking, broadband. Who the fuck doesn't oh. have broadband? And even all the people that complained about the fucking checking in with Xbox One, I think a majority of the people complaining about it still had broadband. They just didn't like it and bitched about it. But it's like, who the fuck doesn't have a high speed internet? It's 2013. The weird thing about it was you did read about people complaining on behalf of other people. That seemed to be most of those arguments. Right. Like, Oh, I'm because the people, people who were going to complain about it can't because they don't have fucking internet. They haven't yeah. heard the message yet. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking They're still dialing in. <laughs> the postman hasn't delivered their latest magazine. Yeah. I'm it waiting is, for a bird any time now. He's bringing it. It is a little frustrating for me that I live in a place that has broadband, and I hate the idea that the technology that I can buy is limited by the fact that other people don't have access to technology. It's like, why do we make our technology applicable to the lowest common denominator to hit the Te widest market i guess so technology wise but it, you know and so that that's a little frustrating and they have you know the xbox one has gone through a metamorphosis since that first announcement yeah. like this week they announced they're not doing connect anymore oh, they're not right gonna, they're not going to yep. require the connect that we but, just downloaded something in points this will be the last time i downloaded points probably for this when new is, dlc when is that update coming, coming out? in the next update but now did they drop the connect from the bundle no no you still have to buy it right so no, it's still a hundred dollars more right. let's not go crazy michael yeah, yeah. i'm sorry i apologize but the fact that you can boot the damn thing up without having to connect connected is it's that's it yeah yeah they're giving i mean i'll there. be honest like like that was the one thing i was like eh but i i would get it anyway I, i'm not silly enough to ever be like, I'm not going to play that, because yeah. I know I will. Nobody, I never every, everybody would play it. Yeah, even, people would complain even about every it, motherfucker complaining it. about it is still, still going to do it. But I will say, even when I used the Kinect in the rare occasions I used it, whenever I wasn't, I fucking unplugged it. Mm. And just like, yeah, just unplug that right there. Most of mine are like literally still in that like styrofoam wrapping, mm -hmm. whatever that stuff is. What's that like sheet styrofoam they use on everything now? It's like that white spongy, yeah. like I don't even know what the material is. But sponge mine are, foam. Sponge foam. Packing my, material. Mine are still wrapped up in that. 
It's app sheets. All right, so when is the Xbox dropping points? Jesus. That's the other thing about that. Here? That's the other thing about fucking uh, with the points. So you're talking about Saints Row. I actually just started playing Saints Row 2 yesterday with Lindsay because I played Saints Row 4 and I was on a Saints Row kick. And Saints Row 2 is a great game. You do the whole thing co-op. So uh, we were playing and motherfucking Xbox Live. Like it's just like buying points. It just it's like in the last like two years, like it's just broken. Like really? it's like every other day it works or it doesn't work. So it's like she tried to because like for games on demand, you just buy the game. You don't use points, right? right. So Saints Row Two is like twenty bucks. I had one copy of the game. I'm like, you can download one and then we can play. So she goes to use her credit card. It's like nah, it doesn't work. So she's like, fuck. So she like. Uh, you can associate a PayPal account with um, mm -hmm. your account. She uses that, doesn't work. And I'm like, all right, try buying it on the Microsoft, like xboxlive.com. I don't know if you can download originals there. I assume you can, because you can do arcade games right. and stuff too. Doesn't work. So oh. I'm like, all right, I'll fucking buy it on mine, and you can use my disc. I try three different fucking, two different credit cards and a PayPal. None of them fucking work. The only workaround we had was that you can still change money to points. You can hit a button. And like, well, when you go to buy games on demand, it's like you hit the X button, it's like 1999 or 1600 points. So I had to change it to points, go buy a fucking Amazon online points card, which gives you the, the code the immediately code, yeah, once you, you buy it, it enter the code in, then download the fucking game. Give me a and break. I was just like, Xbox really doesn't want my fucking money. Like, I hate it. I, 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 hate I go it. through periods where I'm unable to add points to my account. All the time it and happens. The to workaround me. is normally for me, I go to Xbox.com, it's like, fuck, all right, fine. Then through the website, it's like I have to add yep. points like yep. that. Because All it the just time. doesn't work. I'll All delete my credit card. I'll re-add it. Nope, doesn't work. So I have same credit card. I, I'll put it on the website. I have that with some credit cards. They don't work on through, through Xbox. I they have just, not work. fucking bought. American not Express bought, doesn't work. But I, I have. Yeah. I have fucking. I have Mastercard, and that same doesn't shit. fucking yeah. work. No, I've, I've dealt with a deal. I know exactly what you. I uh. About. I, I perfect example of why they have deals. I turn on my Xbox one day. It's like. Brave, the the movie about the the girl, yeah. you know, not the fucking shitty. She believes one. in herself. Yeah, not the shitty Brave Warriors tale, but it's like Brave, fifty percent off or whatever. I look it up; it's like nine bucks. I know Ray perfected that game in like a day or two, and I'm just like, I'm not Ray. I don't play every single game like that, but I'm just like, ten bucks. I might buy that. Just Seems like you've been picking up it. lately. Like I've noticed you've been posting more completed games. I have been, I have been tearing through games a little bit. It's kind of yeah. nice to get back to it. But I'm like, fuck it, I'll buy it. It's on sale. Go to buy it. Tried like six different ways, wouldn't let me buy it. I'm like, all right, fuck you. And then the sale ended the next day. And I'm like, well, congratulations, and now I'm not buying it. Like, you fucked yourselves out of my money. <laughs> Do you think that uh, arcade games should be counted at the same level as retail games for completing them? No, really? I don't. I think it's weird Do to say... Do you think it should be like a separate say, list, or just not have it there at all? I think it should be a separate list. I've spent I'm, as much time I'm, completing I'm fine arcade with it. games. It's just I like, just finished Burnout Crash. That took for freaking ever. I guess, but that's really up to the, up to the game. Like, like, fucking... Um, State of Decay took me, like I said, maybe like seven hours. I just spent 35 on Saints Row. So, like, the fact that both of them add one to completed games is kind of like, mm, I don't know. I'd be fine with a retail list and then an arcade list. Because it's like, just looking at it, or even if, even if you broke it down in that list, like, looking at it, it's like 70 completed games. Holy fuck. And, like, 55 of them could be, like, three-hour arcade games. Yeah. So. It all depends. There's one I just played recently. Uh, I'll pull it up here. I don't think this will kill my active download for our test. Uh, this came out either last week or the week before on uh, Xbox Live, and it's a game called Brothers. Did you guys play it at all? I have not played it yet. Ray Pe played it. People talk it. about this game like crazy. It's a beautiful game, and it's a really cool Pretty story. Pretty short, right? Yeah, it's, fa it's fairly short. I'd say it's like a three or four hour game. And when you talk about achievements, I like the way they handled achievements in Brothers uh, because not a single achievement is story related. I like that. They're all outside of the main story thread. Like, you could finish the entire game and not get a single achievement. I don't like that. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. You should get some. I agree. You should get some achievement for finishing the game. I agree. I I'd be even fine if it's just a like few, a you completed the game. Here's ten. I'm points. all for not having the you beat this level achievement. And that's yeah. ninety percent of the achievements. That's what I loved about State of Decay. I mean, there was a, there was a few uh, like main story mission achievements, a bunch, maybe maybe you know like. 40, 45% of them or whatever. But that's what I really like about the arcade, one, sp expanding the 400 points, and two, I like State of Decay, there's 30 achievements in that game. Yeah. You know, and it's like, fucking Last of Us had 24 trophies. Yeah. State of Decay has more achievements than Last well, of Us I had trophies. There's more uh, standards for achievements on the 360 yeah. than there are for trophies on the, on the, the PlayStation The thing that annoyed me, and like I said that, and everyone's just like, oh, they said they only put 24 trophies because they didn't want it ruining it. It's like, really? Because like, 
boom, would really ruin my whole experience. You know, just don't look it up at that second. Like, I'm so happy. What a, sh- what a shitty fucking excuse. In one podcast, we got to hear your Jack impression and your internet voice impression. Yeah, I, this is my favorite. Well, fucking was this was this oh, dude, do you want to fucking ruin the story? Play <laughs> Last of Us, and then like a trophy pops up, and then uh, the whole experience is ruined. Then my mom comes in, and I drop my pizza bagel. Get out of control. <laughs> you know, so, I, I, give me the fucking pop, man. You know, I've never had a pizza bagel. Pizza oh, they're bagels so are delicious. Good. They're, they're amazing. They're so good. We they're should the, have pizza bagels next week. That's how I'm I got down. fat. That's how I got fat as fuck, I'm eating down. pizza bagels. We're here? No, 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 no. I'm thin here. I got, I got thin right before I started working here. I was up to like, I was thin my whole life. And then like when I got to my 20s, I hit the, oh shit, my metabolism is fucked now and I'm going to get fat. You know, and yeah. I did nothing but play video games now. Like I worked, but I also had money. So I just played video games all fucking day. So uh, I would just stay up to like 2 a.m. just fucking playing video games and just eating uh, microwavable food. You gotta look at Michael's I, driver's license photo from Jersey sometime. He definitely was a fat I don't have that anymore. Are there any took it away Are there me. any places to get pizza bagels in Austin? Yeah, it's fucking you, you, pizza bagels you buy at like frozen, fucking Walmart. Frozen, it's frozen oh, food section. I thought you go to like a bagel no, shop. All, no, 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 no. It's like a Corona. All, all pizza bagels are, it's a, it's a little, it's, it's an amazing invention. It's a little uh, like square tray. What if I go for, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's a bagel it's, with pe- tomato it's sauce a, on it's it. It's a mini bagel <laughs> with tomato sauce on it. So you, you pull out the tray, you just throw it on the box, and you throw it in the microwave, and it's like just nine of them. So it's nine, they're, they're about that big. Okay. I'm making a This is the most relevant gaming see. discussion yeah. we've ever had, by well, the way. Well, pizza, Bernie. Pizza, pizza bagels, bagels fuel mini gaming. pizza bagels I'm are saying, I'm, not, I'm not kidding, it's oh, the most okay. relevant. The pizza bagels and Mountain Dew are the way to go, and yep. the way to be fucking fat. And I was rocking, I was, I was, I'm right now, I'm about 155, I was up to 180, 185. Wow. That's significant. So and you're like what five foot four, so yeah. Nice. <laughs> so this is brothers. So what, what yeah, I'm playing brothers here. So the weird thing about brothers is that there's two characters on screen, and I'm controlling both. You control both. both. Oh, with like both with both. each stick. Yeah, yeah. Pinner did a great story about this. So you're playing co-op essentially with yourself. Like, see, I fucked up my little brother here, the blonde kid. And so, so the right thumbstick is the big brother, and the left thumb, uh, left thumbstick big brother, and the right thumbstick is little brother. Does it get confusing? Like you have to try to all your time. mind. You have to keep the one on the left side and one on the right side. I, I actually played this with my uh, my kid and and my oldest kid, and the way we played is we both just held one half the controller and played the entire yeah. game like that. That'd be pretty interesting. I wonder how challenging it would be if you like you swap them and tried to play the whole game, yeah. like with the the brother on the right stick on the left and the uh, brother on the left stick achievement. on the right. Actually, and then basically the whole controls are you have the two thumbsticks that control the brothers, and then you have the triggers for the action. That's it. That's the only controls in the game. There was a there was stuff. an old PS2 game called The Adventures of Cookie and Crisp, where it was like. <laughs> A four-player game stupid. that you played with two controllers, and you played it the way you described playing with your with your son, uh-huh. where each per- where people had to share a controller, and you got one stick and like the the shoulder buttons, uh, and and that was it. But Brothers is a beautiful game, and it's a great story. And if you like games like Limbo, Braid, Bastion, uh, Journey, that's an even better one. Uh, you should definitely check out Brothers. I is, really enjoy what, it. What is this game about? Just like um, you're, you're exploring in the woods? It's two brothers, and uh, in the first scene, their father gets sick, and they're going to get their father medicine from something that's on a scroll. They just like, go to this thing and get some... It's all done without dialogue, or oh. this like, nonsense, like Simlish kind of dialogue. Like, and they say, go get this thing, and then it's their adventure together to work together to go get this thing. So if there's no dialogue, there's no like subtitles either? There's just, so there's just like no communication? Nope. Okay, so Nothing. it's a lot. it makes me think of a lot of like uh, Ico then. Yeah. Ico's like, another good one. It's a very artful, uh, simple story. You know, I played Journey with Ray just recently, and it was, you know, very similar to that. You know, where you're just going along. It's very intuitive how to play. Mm-hmm. The puzzles are not <laughs> overly complex. Um, it can be a little difficult sometimes navigating some of these things that you have to do, like climbing on things with the two different characters. Um, but it's a lot of fun. And I really liked it. And the story is great. And uh, it's definitely different than most things you're going to run to in the video game. Is there a big twist at the end? Like, your dad's not really sick. Also, your, your dad's you, the pharmacist. You are your dad. I, I, I'm gonna say, listen, I would say even if there was a twist, I wouldn't say there is a twist, because that to me in itself is a spoiler. Yeah. I hate when, yeah, people, there was a, when there's a twist Dude, in the story. Dude, just wait. Just wait for the twist at the Dude, end. Dude, yeah. At the one hour and 57 minute mark, you're never, ever going to see this think, twist coming, but it's coming. That's yeah. how, I think but that, I won't you, spoil it. You're sitting there like this going, oh, <laughs> yeah. okay, there that's it is. That's how Book of Eli <laughs> got ruined for me. Someone told me it was going to be a twist. So I was watching, I was like, oh, okay. Like, so, I knew it. Like, so instantly. you literally just did that to everybody else who watches our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's Book of Eli. That's an old movie now. That's like a five year old movie. You just passed that It's a five year old movie. And, and it was okay. cut. Book of Eli was a great movie. <laughs> it was all right.
It was. You know, we were talking about on the podcast on Monday, we were talking about the list of highest grossing actors based on their box office. There's a whole other list that somebody sent me, which was um, actors who have never been in a sequel, the highest grossing actors. And Denzel Washington and Leonardo DiCaprio are at the top of the list. They've never been in a sequel ever. I found, I that, that, I found that fascinating. Hmm. I don't know why, but that seemed particularly fascinating to so me. So I guess we're not getting a Titanic 2? <laughs> no, well, well Titanic 2 actually already came out. I believe it was made by Asylum, the same people that made Sharknado. Oh, my oh. God. It, it took place, uh, and it's only like, Titanic 2 is like two years ago. If I'm correct, and this is all, I've never actually seen the movie. This is like secondhand information. But I think it takes place uh, exactly 100 years to the day of the original Titanic Oh, my accident, God. And it happens again Switch on again. the Titanic 2. Bum, 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 bum. All right, we're looking at the Xbox here? Yeah, so I just downloaded the DLC, and let's see here. It's still 68. It's still Walking Dead's still there. So now, right, now we launch that, it? Now you downloaded the DLC, now launch it. Now launch it and see what happens, yeah. But like... This might not be the best title to test this with, because this is an episodic game, but we'll find out. Like I said, and while this may prove some things, I know for a fact it's just been added one day. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like, shit got added, and I was like, damn it, and just yeah. taken away. It is frustrating, and I wish it was clear like when that takes place, you know. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just whenever they, they release just come the in DLC the night while you're sleeping. They take and, away, and no, they add. They take <laughs> away and then they add. They take away a completed game and they add DLC. Yeah, they add the achievements. I, I think there should be. Well, one of the things I've always liked about the PlayStation system is the existence of the platinum trophy, which typically is a trophy that just says you got all the other trophies. That is it. That's yeah. all it's ever been. Is that all it's ever, ever been? On PS3, yeah. yeah that's so all the it number is. of platinum trophies you have, and it's always associated it's with completed retail. games. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't get affected by uh, DLC or anything like that. Yeah, I do like, I will say that's a nice standard where like some 360 games have that, but obviously not all. But it's kind of, it makes sense on the PS3 because it's a standard. It's like, if you get a platinum, that means you beat this game. But for 360, it's pretty rare to have an achievement like that. So it's just kind of like redundant because you never, it's like you always like get the last achievement and then you get the, get all the other achievements achievement. It's like, what the fuck is the point? It's like, it's like, I don't know, like Platinum Trophy, at least, it's still a trophy, but it's, like, separate. You know what I mean? It's like... But you, you can just show off your Platinum trophies. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The, the 100% achievement for achievements, like the games that have it, all it is is another achievement. Yeah, you know it what is. I mean? It's yeah. just one yeah. achievement. And yeah. it's like... But I, I'll i never get that before anything else. Like, it only comes last. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't get the point of it in putting it in games. PS3 makes more sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. Because then uh, it's done. It's like a checkbox. You right. filled it. In right. There. Uh, Brandon, do not switch to uh, the screen because I'm looking at some Walking Dead stuff here, trying to figure out how to play. Yeah, don't switch. <laughs> because I don't want it to like I'm in the last episode of the retail version, and I would not. Oh my to God, burning everyone's dead! <laughs> it's, oh, it's apocalypse. Well, here's the thing. Wait till the twist. And this is why, yeah, new <laughs> shit, right? This is why I haven't played it yet either. So Walking Dead, uh, you know, the original uh, release and all the the episodes and whatnot, it's been out for a while, I guess. Like, like a o- little over a year. Over a year. And I've never played it. So now, especially working at Achievement Hunter and doing all the Let's Plays and stuff, I'm torn because it's like I really want to go home and play it. But at the same time, it's like somehow it hasn't been spoiled yet for okay. me. And I've, okay. and I've never played it. So do I fucking just play it or do I record the whole thing? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like always like it's like every game is like that with Just you, record now, it. you know what I mean? What's the harm? It's totally different. You got recording shit at home? Well the, the thing the thing is I record it, I would record it though live with commentary. Uh, which totally changed the aspect of the game. Just do a full play. The whole well that's my point. Yeah. Full plays are great for videos, but it's totally separate from enjoying the game. You know? I, I would say Walking Dead is a game that like if you were gonna play it, it's 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 almost like your experience uh, playing the game is the same as somebody else's experience playing the game. There's no like unique experience playing Walking Dead. You can make them There's choices. A couple of choices. Yeah. You can make some choices and things like that. But overall, it's like you're watching an interactive yeah, story. It, it Walking is, Dead's it, a really interesting. It'll game. affect yeah. your like party mm-hmm. as time goes on, like who makes it and who doesn't make it. Uh, so that's where the game really diverges. Like sometimes I'll be talking to someone and be like, "Oh, can you believe it when this happened?" Like, yeah. no, that person died like immediately. I feel like just for that, because I'm a fucking smarmy asshole, like that would be worth enough recording. You know, just to listen to the dialogue and be like, oh, oh. fuck that bitch, and just well, kill somebody. Not to pump sunshine up your ass, but you playing video games is a lot different than other people playing it's video true. games. It's true. Yeah. I mean, I mean, a lot of people can pick up a game and be bad at it. When you pick up a game and are bad at it, it's four million views. I mean, it's a little different. Yeah. So in that sense, yeah, absolutely. If it's a fan of yours, I would say I would love to see that. But that also being said, Walking Dead is not a game that you would, like, 
be bad at either. True. You know what I mean, yeah. So. Well, I mean, more of like for a full play. There you to go. To do the whole thing. That you know, makes just sense. Commentate. And it's also short. It's relatively short. Yeah. I could I could do one part of video, have the whole game done in what is it, six episodes? I yeah. Think? The it's thing, five the thing, episodes and then the four hundred days. Thing. The thing That's about it too. Five. It'd be five parts. Yeah. Is and I'm sure the people who would love to see this, and I'm sitting here telling you all the reasons why you why you shouldn't do it. They're probably like, shut the fuck up, or you want to do it. But also in this, you have this ability to like turn on a recording device and you can talk for an hour straight. True. You know, and and not stop. The problem with Walking Dead is they're also doing the same thing. They're talking constantly. Right. You know, that's that's, that's pretty true. much the entire game. So, all right, let's true see. That. So, I, I finally loaded up 400 days. I have actually played. I saw a little cutscene in the game, and let's see if this took I would imagine now it adds. Yeah, because, you, like, you how much further can you go than this? Before well, you unlocked your first achievement. achievement. Yeah. Oh, it's still there. All right, so obviously we chose the wrong game to test this No, no, this no, no, no. You got it removed. You're at 67 now. Oh. Yeah, it's 500 out of 600. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, yeah, 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 you got fucked. So why does it show? Oh, I guess I didn't show my completed games. There we go. Yeah, you so know, now you it's not my completed games anymore. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So now so now I have removed... Uh, it's at the front because you just This is it. what I do for you people. I have lost a completed game. Oh, there's, yeah. there's Flock is now on my list. But you will now just complete it because it yeah. is incredibly easy. Is that right? There is one achievement in 400 days. That's missable. That's missable. But like, if you miss it, you can just like restart that story and you get it like in the first Even 400 minute. days is super short, right? Yeah, 400 days, I think I finished the whole thing in like an hour. Yeah, it's like, what, is it like four, four or five stories? It's but like five or six. But they're like 20 minutes long each and that's yeah. it. It was, su it was super It's quick. a lot of setup for two, right? Uh, that, supposedly so, that's the case. So I've heard. So like I felt like I was a little unsatisfied by it because there's no like conclusion or completion of the story, but right. they say it's setting up uh, season two, so we'll see where that goes. So we are uh, we're at time here. Is there what's, anything else you want to bring up? What's the game out? that you that you lost that you're most upset about? That like maybe you lost your completed score in it. Ah, uh, fuck. It's really not so much like it depends on what the DLC is. Yeah. I guess you know what I mean. Like uh, I haven't checked, and I don't even know if they've added it yet. But off the top of my head, I can say it would be Tomb Raider, the new one. So like mm. that, uh, it was like maybe. 85% of the achievements were single player. I got them all. And then I actually grinded out the multiplayer, which I never, ever do, yeah. ever. Like, that's the biggest difference between Ray and I. Like, he'll play multiplayer for, like, a week of a shitty game that he doesn't right. want to play, doesn't want to play multiplayer. And he'll be like, oh, no, that only took a week. And I'm like, fuck, fuck that. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. I don't have 100% any Halo game except for ODST, which it didn't have any DLC. It's pain in the ass, dude. Yeah. So Tomb Raider, it was doable. There was a few achievements you needed to other people, but I knew other people that needed them, so I got it with them. And then... The other thing is, like, get to the highest rank, but there's a way to do that by yourself. Right. Like, there was a game you could play by yourself, so I played it over and over and over and over again, and I perfected that game, and I don't know if it's come out yet, so I could be wrong, but I think there's been multiplayer DLC, but they even said, like, after the game came out, their first announcement was their first DLC would be multiplayer with achievements, and I'm like, I'm never going to play anything. Yeah. yeah. Not to mention, like, I'm sure, like, there's nothing stopping them from just being fucking assholes about it. And just, just doing like, it constantly. Well, yeah. I guess, I guess... For sure, it would be Bioshock 2, because I complain about it all the time. Bioshock I, 2 or Bioshock Infinite? Bioshock 2. Okay. I perfected Bioshock when it came out. Then fucking, uh, I don't know if it was one or two waves of DLC. It was two, because the, um, it, was like, it was like three, actually, because there was the Minerva's Den DLC, which was awesome. I remember that Fantastic one. single-player DLC. There was the uh, Little Sister Protector Trials, which is, were like little mini-games. We had to protect them, which wasn't the best DLC, but it was easy. And then there was... Um, just like multiplayer shit and two achievements I don't fucking have in Bioshock 2 to this day even though I played all the shitty multiplayer got all the achievements are play play one of every map of the map like the map pack DLC maps and win on every one but there's no fucking playlist for the new maps uh -huh. so when all you can do is just join a multiplayer game and hope that every other single person you're playing with has it and then that it comes up in rotation. Because if one person doesn't, you'll just then never you play it. The... So I played the game for, I, like, I got the DLC, played it for like two, three days, got every single other achievement, could and you, never once got those Could you play as a party and like make sure everyone in your party has it? And you then... probably could. I mean, but I think even Bioshock, like you need at least six people to start a game. So it's mm -hmm. like, you need five other people to do it. And, and to this day, they could have added the playlist. I'm only talking within the first three months of when the DLC came out. But like, why the fuck would you have a map pack DLC and not release not a, a playlist, playlist for it? Because no you're never going to get to play I, it. I've literally never once ever played any of the new maps that I paid for. That and sucks. so that's two achievements I don't have in Bioshock 2. That sucks. But Brian Man just got online. I asked him, I asked him if he lost his 100% Bioshock Infinite, which is what I'm currently frustrated about, is that I went through, I even did that 1999 mode, completed the game 100%. They put out a DLC I, that I can't stand. 
and it broke my 100%. fucking dishonored did that too yeah the first dlc the second one came out was like story stuff and it's supposed to be really good the first dlc dishonored put out fucking shit the game was great fucking thousand it took me a few days the dlc is not only not fun but it's fucking insanely impossible like it's so <laughs> challenging it's like it's it's kind of like the protector trials but like every time you try the level basically the objectives are randomized mm. so like it's just like this is the most frustrating thing ever and now i don't have that game perfected either oh well That's okay the worst. time all right i'll post i'll update you guys next week to find out if ray lost his bioshock infinite one. we'll find out ray we'll you're a bitch out. to be continued and you're not a bitch ray we like you this much on a scale of that much this is the remix. Come on now. Yeah, I like this. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Nothing can save you. Hello. Hello, good morning. Tell me what the lick read. Pretty face, thin waist with the sick weed. First time fish telling in the six feet. Real bad boy, tell him come and get me. I'm at the fight. Bang kind of like Bellman. Only took a trip to the truck twice. Unpacked the Mac 11 and their Maxis.